Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld, Chief Income Strategist with the Oxford Club. Welcome to State of the Market. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another wealth building, money saving video like today's. Because today, I'm going to tell you what you need to know about taxes when you invest in REITs, which are very popular because of those juicy, high yielding dividends. Now, if you're unfamiliar with REITs, it stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And they're stocks that have portfolios of real estate. And the company collects the rents and sends it to you in the form of dividends. And you don't have to deal with chasing down the tenants for their rent checks or dealing with hoarders like I had to in a property I once owned that looked like this. As interest rates rise and inflation heats up, I expect REITs to be a good place to invest and for those dividends to go even higher. Right now, you can easily earn 5%, 6%, or even 7% yields on many REITs. But like the security services companies operating out of the corner social club, Uncle Sam is going to get his cut. So here's what you need to know. Most REIT dividends are taxed at ordinary income tax rates, not qualified dividend tax rates. So if you own the stock of a regular corporation like Microsoft, for example, and get paid a dividend, that dividend is taxed at the qualified dividend rate of 15% for most investors or up to 23.8% for high earners. Most REIT dividends are taxed at your ordinary income tax rate, which is going to be higher than the qualified dividend tax rate. Now, some REIT dividends may be qualified or a portion may be qualified dividends. Your broker will let you know when it sends you your 1099 DIV form in the early part of the year. Many REITs also qualify for a Section 199A deduction. And in those cases, investors can deduct up to 20% of their REIT dividends from their taxable income. So let's walk through an example. Let's say you earn $1,000 in dividend income from a regular corporation like Microsoft. If you're not an exceptionally high earner, you'll pay $150 in federal income tax on those dividends. Now, if you earn $1,000 from a REIT and are in the 22% tax bracket, you'd pay $220. But if the REIT qualifies for a 199A deduction, you'd pay 22% on $800 rather than $1,000, so you'd pay $176 in taxes. Now, that's still a little bit more than the 15% rate, but not much more, and it may be worth it if you're achieving a higher yield on your investments. And again, your broker will provide you with all of the tax information that you need. Most REIT Investor Relations websites have information on past dividends and whether they included the Section 199A deduction. So it's a good idea to understand what your tax liability may be before buying a high-yielding investment so you don't get a nasty surprise on April 15th. After all, you're probably better off dealing with this guy than this one. Thanks for watching State of the Market. For more wealth and income building ideas, be sure to check out my free e-letter, Wealthy Retirement. Just click on that link below. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld. I'll see you next week.